Welcome to the Adventures in Alchemy podcast, where we share tips, techniques, and true stories to support you in using the law of attraction and alchemy to create magic and live the life of your dreams. Here's your host, the founder of DailyAlchemy.com, Michelle Martin Dobbins. Hi, this is Michelle Martin Dobbins from DailyAlchemy.com. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about the spiritual nature of life and what that means for you in your daily routine. You don't have to be a yogi and sit up in a mountain and meditate all day to have a spiritual, wonderful life. In fact, for me, it's not a choice that I would make. I think it's great that we have the gamut and there are people who choose to do that. But for me, My choice is to blend spirituality into living fully in this reality. I enjoy all the beautiful, wonderful things in the world around me in nature and, you know, beautiful paintings, beautiful art, beautiful food and wonderful tasting food. So I want to blend being really present in life with being really present spiritually. That's my goal. And I'd gotten kind of off the path a little bit lately. And so I'm bringing myself back to that path. And I wanted to share with you a technique that I did that is helping me and maybe it will help you. But first, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on how I kind of got off the beaten path. I've been really lucky over the past many years that I can pretty much set up my schedule. And for a while before I started homeschooling, I had gotten to a point where I was really tired and drained from driving a lot because my kids were all going to special charter schools. And so I spent four hours a day in my car and I listened to lots of audio books and I did lots of sending Reiki out to people, but it was still, it was really draining. And I'm definitely aware that that's part of my own story. But I decided I wanted to choose to do things differently. And we started homeschooling and we love the freedom and the flexibility that has. And this year, my daughter is taking classes at a nearby community college. She's a sophomore in high school, homeschooled, but she's able to take these early college classes as a dual enrollment thing. So her first semester, she just went two days a week. And one of the days was the same day my other children go to a homeschool co-op. So it worked out really nice and easy and it didn't add more. And this semester, she's taking more classes. So she's going to class four days a week. Plus, she's on a math team. And I'm feeling myself back into that routine of driving a lot and only being able to work in little. I've got like two hours before I have to go pick someone up and take someone and So I started getting really like, you know, I need to change the way I'm doing things. This isn't isn't working. I'm losing my spiritual connection. And then I really had to step back and think and make some big choices because I knew that I had lots of choices. And the, the one choice that we all can always make is to change our story, to change what we're saying and thinking about what's going on. And I always think that's a great first place to start. So for me, I could decide that, you know, this time of driving people to places, it's a great connection when I'm driving them there. Sometimes we have these wonderful, deep conversations. In fact, we quite often do in the car. And so those are really nice. And then when I'm dropping people off and I'm leaving, I'm listening to spiritual audio books or just trying to be really present in the act of driving. And so doing those things and not getting into the story of, you know, I don't have time to complete my work. When am I going to do this? And just letting things flow and know that there'll be time for everything. But in reality, I do also have to be aware there's only so many hours in the day. So I had to sit and look and I I thought about this, what was happening right now where I'm driving a lot again, (laughs) which is not my biggest joy, but I was focusing on the aspects of, of it that were joyful. And I thought about it because there are lots of things in life that we can delegate. Even if you, you don't have to be a millionaire, you don't have to make a hundred thousand dollars a year to delegate things that you don't like. And you'll find that when you do that, you have more time for the things you do like, and it's easier often to make more money. 
So I thought about this. I was like, I could have somebody drive my children to these places that I'm driving them to. And that would free up my schedule. But for me, I thought about it and it didn't really feel good because I'm having such a connection with them in a car that we're just having these really deep conversations, especially with my oldest daughter. But even when all four of my children are in the car, we just seem like these really interesting conversations come up. And as a parent, I'm always aware that this time of them living with me is short. And so I don't want to give up very much time that I get to spend with them. And even this car time seems very precious, although I don't like driving in the car. So I was like, hmm. But I do, um, I have other places where I can take away and get some more time. I have someone who comes in twice a week and does our laundry. So I don't do laundry. So that time that I would have taken to sit there and put the laundry in and fold the laundry and put the laundry up is time that I get to work on my business or work on my writing or spend with family. So I invite you to look at your schedule and see if there are things that you're not enjoying, if you can first change the story about them and find aspects of them that you love. And second, consider if you can delegate some of those. And third is another thing that I just have started doing, just to remind myself that everything is spiritual, that, you know, sitting in my room, meditating is spiritual. Driving my children to school is spiritual. Cooking breakfast is spiritual doing this podcast is spiritual. All life is a spiritual experience for us. And the more focused we are on that, the more we get out of it. And for me, this year, my word of the year, I always do a word of the year. And mine is allow, because last year I spent so much time trying to be daring, which was my word, and make things happen, which was a wonderful experience. But now I'm more into allowing things to unfold and expand more naturally. So I had kind of a mantra that came to me and it's an, a mantra and intention and I've been playing with it for the last week or so and I really like the energy of it so I wanted to share it with you. And basically it can be done a few different ways. But this is the basic one that came for me, and it was, I allow the universal life energy, or God, if you prefer God, sometimes I use God, the universe, universal life energy interchangeably. You can use whatever feels comfortable for you. I allow the universal life energy to blank, fill in the blank, through me. So if I am driving my children to school, I will say, I allow the universal life energy to drive my children to school through me. I allow God to cook dinner through me. I allow the universe to do this podcast through me. And then I set that intention that I am allowing in that spiritual nature, my higher self, to work through this body and to do the things very present, very mindful, and very much connected with the highest part, the highest vibration of myself. And that helps me focus on being more present, seeing the spiritual aspects of all the mundane things in life, and then they become less mundane. So I've really enjoyed playing with that. And I feel a big energy shift when I say that before I do activities. So I'm trying to make that more a part of my life. And if you're familiar with Abraham Hicks and they have a technique called segment intending, which is basically when you start on each new activity of your day, you know, you're getting up and you're taking a shower. So you may set an intention for how your morning prep goes. And then you may set an intention for how your morning commute to work goes. And then you may set an intention for how your meetings at work go. And then you may set an intention for how your lunch goes. So each thing you're setting an an intention. And so this is basically that same kind of process. But for me, I'm trying to be more allowing. And you can even shift this instead of allow. 
You can say, I invite the universal life energy to work through me. And I've been, you know, I've been doing allow, invite. You could even do, I ask the universal life energy to co-create this meeting with me. However feels good for you, but it's just a kind of a fun thing that you can play with. And I keep it right now. I've got it as a sticky note on my laptop and a sticky, a background on my phone and a little sticky note that I kind of keep in my purse, my wallet so that I'm reminding myself because I'm not yet in the habit of doing this, but I'm doing it more and more because I like that it reminds me to invite in that higher aspect of myself, that higher aspect of the universe to participate in what I'm creating in life. And we're always creating and we're always capable of connecting with this life force when we choose to and when we focus on it. So I've had a lot of fun playing with intending and setting up this mantra and intention and inviting the universe to work through and with me and just be allowing to that process no matter what looks like life looks like on the outside because I'm very aware that several years from now and not that far away I probably won't have anybody to drive places (laughs) and as much as I don't enjoy driving people places or that's my story I'm enjoying it more and more I'm sure I will miss that so I invite you to play with this when you're setting up your own routine and you want to add more spirituality into your day. Just setting this intention on everything that you're already doing can invite more spiritual connection into your day without changing the routine at all. So let me know how this works for you. I would love to hear. You can find me on dailyalchemy.com. And up in the right-hand side of the website, there are links to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You can send me an email. Let me know how this goes for you. And I'd love to hear also how you add spirituality to your day. So have a wonderful day. Go out, enjoy the journey, create some magic, and I will see you next time. Namaste and big hugs. Hey guys, the Magical Life Manifesting Club is temporarily closed to new members right now. I am revamping and revising and adding all sorts of sparkly new stuff, and it will be opening back up in May. But right now, I've got some fun freebies for you to play with while you're waiting for the club to open back up. You can get a free weekly manifesting planner and daily manifesting planner that you can use depending on what type you prefer. Also, there is a magical lunar planner, an angel assignment planner, money tracker to watch your money manifest and grow, a daily love list PDF, and a revamp your vibe in five minutes e-kit. And all of these are available free on Daily Alchemy. So to get to them, you can either go to dailyalchemy.com and scroll down till you see the button that says freebies and it will take you to the page where you can sign up to get these. Or you can also put dailyalchemy.com slash magical freebie vault and there is a link in the show notes. So go on over and pick those up and let me know how they work for you. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Adventures in Alchemy podcast. Connect with me on thedailyalchemy.com or Facebook at facebook.com slash Michelle Dobbins author. Join us next time for even more magical life tips.